1997, I played a game called Abe's Odyssey that pretty much changed the entire way I looked at video games. Nice. Just visually, the way it looked and felt like, like a real high-budget cartoon. The characters felt real to me. The gameplay felt connected to Abe, the hero. And now I've got Lorne Lanning here, who created the original Oddworld. And now we have Oddworld New and Tasty, where we are revisiting that original game. We are. That's amazing, man. And it's all completely redone. What I love about this is, this is not an upscale. This is not we cleaned up the old bitmaps, right. the old animation. You have right. rebuilt this game from the ground up. We have. Working with Oddworld and Joe, I worked together. And we saw an opportunity with the limited funds that we had to uh, revisit the original Abe. And we, you know, since uh, 2008, we've been really getting more in touch with community, getting our games online. And in doing that, we got a lot of response from the audience. And they really wanted to see Abe. They wanted to see Abe back. And we said, well, how can we do that in a special way, but yet retain true to the integrity of the original design? And if, you know, speaking of the original design, it was 1997 yeah. that that released, right? That was before the first Toy Story movie, right. Right? if you put it into perspective. And uh, so at the time, there wasn't even CG motion pictures. At the time, there were still people arguing whether computer graphic characters would ever be able to really compel an audience. And, uh, and I always thought that was just, you know, being someone from 3D computer graphics, yeah. that that was just kind of crazy. You know, it was obvious to me that the future was going to be more expressive in computer graphics. And so it was our first opportunity to really tell a story, our own story, using the mediums that we loved, which was 3D computer graphics and gaming. And uh, we were really trying to br bring, you know, Hollywood production value, Hollywood storytelling, and uh, real, real sort of high design in terms of integrating character abilities, what the character does, who the character is emotionally, uh, situationally, you know, the world they're living in, and really trying to bring them into a synergized experience where it, it just didn't feel like the character was an excuse for the game but it felt like the two were integral and could not be separated. Absolutely, and I think that still makes the gameplay feel fresh even today, because everything is motivated by who <laughs> Abe is, right? Like yeah, Abe's, a, Abe's a wimp, he's yeah. scared. Yeah, that's and so right. it's not, this was the first time I played, it looked like a platformer, it felt like a platformer, yeah. but you can't hurt anybody, you gotta convince people <laughs> to help you out, because yeah. you're a weakling, you know? It was, it was all just so fresh, when you came back to completely redesign this mm -hmm. was there anything you was there anything you wanted to tweak in terms of gameplay in terms of interface to well, kind of had update to. it i mean there was a number of things right the original game was very hard now oddly enough a lot of people had told us it was the first game we ever finished but man was it hard and then there was a lot of other people who said i so wanted to play that game and it was too hard so one of the things we knew we had to address was just difficulty levels. We had to make it more accessible uh, for people with a lighter dexterity, and we had to make it equally as tough as the original for the people who wanted that nostalgic, hardcore feeling. Uh, but in the process of doing both, we also knew that we're changing, I mean, we had the benefit of having released the game, of having years of people playing it, yeah. and learned you know, what to do. And we fixed a number of those things in the following game, which was called Abe's Exodus. And then uh, like quick save and perfect yeah. save, and, and things we had screwed up the first time and really pissed people off. To say, I gotta, I gotta tell you, the checkpoints in the original... Yeah, sorry about that. They, yeah. made, me, they made me cry a little bit. I teared up a little bit, Yeah, Lord. Yeah, maybe... Uh, <laughs> you know, so, we, but all, we that is, all that's been smoothed out now. It has. So we, we brought the things that we learned from the later games, we brought them back into this first game. And the big step, obviously, is even though we originally built Abe in 3D, he was playing back as bitmaps, right. you know. And this time, it's all in real time 3D. But we were able to uh, amortize all those assets that we built from the original game that were built closer to film resolution and then pre-render for the game. But we were able to use all that as a template to build new data, but it saved us a lot of time and money. So it allowed us to put more time and energy into the, you know, getting the gameplay right. And if you look, like even right in these scenarios, these used to be hide zones, but in real-time 3D, dealing with uh, dynamic lighting, you're coming upon things faster, it was harder to do as just shadows. So we had right. to find solutions like steam zones. Uh -huh. So you're obscuring the character enough and you get the idea that you know, they're not seeing him. So you, you play off of those uh, sensibilities 
but we had to redesign to make them work in a game where you're moving faster, you're moving continuously, and uh, there was a number of challenges. So uh, as you see, you know, sligs, we're coming upon them so fast now, we had to see their, their sight distances differently. Like we really had to treat it as a, as a fresh design. Yeah. But one of the things we did was we said, well, like if, in movies, you know, when they remade The Time Machine, which is one of my favorite all-time original movies, why did they change the script? Why didn't they just upgrade it to right. like a 21st century movie and keep the same script? And so we said, well, what if we do that? What if we stay true to the original integrity of the design? I mean, people are still buying that original game on Steam and PSN, and amazingly, they say, the design holds up. And uh, today, 17 years later. Wow. And so we go, okay, well, then maybe we did some things right there. But let's not, let's not mess with the integrity of that, let's enhance it. And what was Abe really about? Abe was really about an empathetic character. The idea was, what if we made empathy equal rewards instead of just aggression equal rewards? And if we could do that, maybe we make a more emotionally compelling character. Maybe we make a character that, because he has to talk to other characters, and they respond, and you feel responsible for them, yes. that we would build a deeper emotional relationship. And that was the idea, but it actually came through. I mean, yeah. I think it comes through in all the Abe tattoos I it's, see. And it's funny that you say that because you do get a feeling, you know, as opposed to other platformers or, or, or games of the time where, oh, I'm controlling this character. Yeah. I never felt like I was controlling Abe. I always feel like I'm trying to help Abe out. <laughs> but hopefully the controls were The working. controls were great, no. But yeah. I always felt like, okay, I got to do this. Abe and I have to kind of do this together. Yeah. You know, and so you do. You feel the responsibility for him. God, so, I love the dead. I love the deadpan look when he throws people down the trap yeah. doors. <laughs> <laughs> still good. That still makes me laugh. So, so the idea was like, how can we take a guy who doesn't have a gun? And yeah. I mean, me and, and other original designers had a lot of arguments about this in the beginning. They said you can't have an action game without a gun. Yeah. And and I was like, we're going still to. Still an argument being had to this day. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And the idea was, you know, that was like the the creation of possession was how do we give you a gun and then take it away without you being upset. That's what really led to possession. And so, you know, how does Abe's mystical abilities give him some firepower, but then not retain that and, and ramp on that through the game like we expect in most games that are action games. And so the, the, the idea was constantly coming back to how do we have a character who inherently it really is at the bottom of the food chain, is not the muscle-bound superhero you want to be, is more likely the poor schmuck you are, you know, right. <laughs> struggling through life, and maybe he's in a worse space than you are. But the idea was, was that if we could make him charming and endearing enough and make the characters that he had to save uh, be funny, because he has to navigate them through extreme hazards, and not always successfully. <laughs> right. And so it's brutally hilarious at times. And what we wanted to do, one of the new things that we did to enhance on that was build in all the ragdoll. So yeah. now, you know, I mean, you see Abe gets shot and then he falls to his knees and then he does oh, wow. a face plant into a landmine. And there some really funny, unpredictable events fall out that, you know, we thought was really going to be necessary for this, this time and era to just get a lot of the more predict unpredictable humor happening randomly. And uh, I think that's working. That's awesome. And so, uh, New and Tasty is coming to uh, which consoles? Uh, it's coming to PlayStation 4 first, and uh, we'll be uh, following up, of course, with the uh, PS Vita and PS3. We don't have dates on those yet. We just have yeah. a small team. It'll be on PC. Uh, we're still uh, looking at when we'll release uh, yeah. Wii U, and uh, in Xbox One, looks like it's in the cards awesome. as well. I love the idea of being able to, to finally take this with me as a, as a portable game. Well, so are we. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, great. Thank you so much for joining hey, me.